This is the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro and this is the 16 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro. And in this video, we're going to compare both models in terms of design, actual size differences, benchmarks, video editing, and more. All right, so I have the base model of the 14 inch right here. So this is gonna cost you $19.99. It has a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, along with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. So we have the 14 inch MacBook Pro right here. It weighs the exact same as the 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro, and it's half a pound heavier than the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro from last year. All right, so we're gonna set this to the side and take a look at what else is in the box. So we have our pamphlet right here, which should come with two Apple stickers right in the back. So we have two black Apple stickers right here. Very nice, I love that they are black. Then we have our charging cable right here and our charging block. So this is going to actually be the 67 watt USB-C power adapter. So I would recommend at checkout to add the 96 watt charger for an extra $20. It's definitely worth it for fast charging. And then also inside we have our color matching braided USB-C to MagSafe charger. So since I got the silver model, I have a silver braided cable right here. I love the fact that it's braided just feels so much higher quality and let's go ahead and take off the paper right here so we do have the macbook pro embedded in the bottom once again which looks really nice always the most satisfying part there we go we have our brand new 14 inch m2 pro macbook pro with the legs on all four corners and the macbook pro etched into the bottom i will open this up once we have the 16 inch model unboxed and you can see the difference in the wallpapers on the boxes so both of these are the m2 pro but we do have a different wallpaper for the 16 inch and just picking this up you could tell that the 16 inch is a good bit heavier than the 14 inch you may think that it's only a two inch difference in screen size but it is no noticeably heavier even just when picking up the box. So the 16 inch model is $24.99 and it comes with a 12 core CPU, which was a 10 core on the M1 Pro, along with a 19 core GPU, which was a 16 core GPU on the M1 Pro, so a nice bump up in CPU and GPU for the base model, along with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. Here we go, so we have the 16 inch model and I did get this one in the space gray, so you'll be able to see the difference in space gray and silver. And then also inside we have our pamphlet with our same two black Apple stickers, the same size and everything. We have a 140 watt power adapter here. So this thing is definitely heavier than the 67 watt charger that we got with the 14 inch, but it is going to charge faster as well. And then we have our color matching space gray braided USB-C power cable here. And you can see on the MagSafe adapter right there as well, it is darker, it's color matching, which is really awesome. And let's go ahead and peel this off. You can see that space gray goodness. with the etching and the bottom, and here's what it looks like up top. And here is a color comparison of the space gray and the silver. Now the 16 inch model is going to weigh 4.7 pounds. So that is the same as the M1 Pro. However, it is heavier than the Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is 4.3 pounds. So a good bit heavier. And of course, if you pick both of these up just right here, there's a pretty big, pretty noticeable difference in weight. But as far as the ports on the sides, we have the exact same setup. So we have three Thunderbolt 4 ports. So we have one on the right right here and then over on the left hand side we have two more thunderbolt 4 ports right there and then also on the left side we have our power adapter right there for magsafe we have our headphone jack and then going back over to the right you can see we have our sd card slots and also our hdmi port now that is an hdmi 2.1 port for those wondering so we do have hdmi 2.1 unlike on the m2 mac mini the base model which has hdmi 2.0 still both models are also going to get bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E support, which is great for future-proofing. All right, so let's go ahead and do our first opening and our first boot up of the 16-inch MacBook Pro here. So we do get an auto start. We have our cloth on the screen we will take off, and this thing is beautiful. There's nothing like a brand new MacBook Pro. Let's go ahead and open up the silver 14-inch model here. Auto start once again. Let's take the cloth off, 
Again, just as beautiful. I do think I like the space gray better though this year. I did like silver better before, but I don't know. There's something about this space gray that I just love. All right, so right away, you might notice some differences just looking at these two from a top-down view. So first off, we have the same Magic Keyboard with no touch bar. However, you can see there is a difference in the speaker size right here. So a much bigger speaker on both sides of the MacBook Pro. And if it's anything like the M1 version from last year, it is also going to be louder on the 16 inch model versus the 14 inch model. And you can see the trackpad down here as well is going to be significantly bigger than the trackpad that we have on the 14 inch model. And you just have more real estate in general and it's not just on the screen. Like down low, you have more area where you can rest your hands right here than you have on the 14 inch model as well. And I have to say that this is my favorite keyboard on any MacBook. The keys sound just subdued and just solid when typing. And I've really never had any issues with sticky keys or anything else. All right, so we just finished setting these guys up. Now I wanna talk about the display before we go any further because that is going to be obviously one of the biggest reasons you choose either the 14 inch or the 16 inch model. So. 16 inch model is going to have a 16.2 inch liquid retina xdr display with a resolution of 3456 by 2234 meanwhile the 14 inch has a 14.2 inch liquid retina xdr display with a resolution of 3024 by 1964 and both have the same max brightness so we have a 1000 nits of sustained brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness when watching HDR content. And of course, both sizes also have that 120 Hertz ProMotion display. And then as far as the FaceTime camera and the built-in microphone, you can see and hear how that sounds right now. So I am recording this from the FaceTime HD camera and I don't have an effect on, but I can turn a video effect called portrait on where it blurs out the background as you can see right there, but we do not have anything like center stage where I can move around and it keeps me in frame. Unfortunately, we don't have that on the MacBook Pro. We could hear how the quality is from the built-in microphone, it's not bad. So the built-in microphone that you just heard is the same one that we had on the previous generation that is considered studio quality. So it has a three mic array with high signal to noise ratio and directional beam forming. I think it's good, especially if you're in a pinch and if you're traveling and you don't have an actual microphone with you, I think it's pretty solid. And then as far as the speakers go, we do have more you know, speaker grills right here on the 16 inch model. We have a bigger space. So you would think that it's gonna have you know something bigger on the inside but that's not the case. We have the same high fidelity six speaker setup with force canceling woofers. So it sounds great. The 16 inch model is louder. I did just confirm that, but it's not by much because obviously we have the same, you know, sound system inside. We just kind of have more room for that sound to come out on the 16 inch model. So it is going to sound a little bit louder. The bass is also very solid. It's the best bass I've heard from any, you know, MacBook or any type of computer, even the iMac, it sounds better than the iMac in terms of bass. Now, when it comes to the battery life, we do get a one hour increase this year. So the 16 inch model is going to have 15 hours of web browsing or 22 hours of Apple TV movie playback. The 14 inch model is gonna have 12 hours of web browsing with 18 hours of Apple TV movie playback. So a nice increase there on the 16 inch model. Of course it is bigger, a bigger battery inside. So you are gonna see those battery life gains. And then finally, let's go ahead and do some benchmark testing. So I'm going to go ahead and get downloading all of my benchmark tools. And I am going to also download Final Cut Pro and do a video export test. All right, so we're currently doing the Blackmagic disk speed test. And I'm doing a five gigabyte stress test here. And it seems like the 16 inch model is sustaining longer. And it's probably due to the improved or, you know, just the better thermal management in general inside the 16 inch model. We have a lot more room to work with in there. So you can see that the write speeds are consistently over 3000 or right around 3000. Whereas on the 14 inch model, after a while, it sits around 25 to 2600. Meanwhile, the read speeds you can see are right around 2900 on the 16 inch and right around 25 to 2600 on the 14 inch. Now, of course, this will vary and you're going to get different scores 
each time, but it seems like the 16 inch model is more consistent, you know, over the long haul. All right, so we're gonna stop doing the disc speed test and move on to a Geekbench 5 test. So we started this at the same time. Let's see which one finishes first and let's see how our scores compare. I am actually expecting a decent difference here because we do have a 10 core CPU on the 14 inch and a 12 core CPU on the 16 inch, along with a 16 core GPU on the 14 versus a 19 core GPU on the 16 inch. So we should see some differences here here in terms of Geekbench scores. All right, so both tests finished almost at the same time, and you can see our scores here. So we got on the 14 inch, a 1908 single core, versus 1935 on the 16 inch, and then an 11359 on the multi-core on 14 inch, and a 14576 on the multi-core on the 16 inch. Now I also wanna test out the GPUs with OpenCL. So we're gonna run a compute benchmark here to test out the GPU, since again, we do have 19 cores versus 16 cores. All right, so the 16 inch finished first, and it had a score of 4477 versus 39466 on the 14 inch. So quite a difference there. Now let's switch it over to the metal compute API here. We're going to keep it on Apple M2 Pro. Let's go ahead and run this again and see what the scores look like for metal. All right, so this one's a little bit closer. So we scored a 46, 645 on the 14 inch and a 50, 616 on the 16 inch. Now let's move over to our Cinebench test. And this one should be pretty interesting. So we are going to test out the CPU on both of these and you can see 10 cores versus 12 cores. We're going to start with a single core test. All right, so we just finished up the Cinebench R23 test and you can see we have quite a big score gap between the two. So first off on the single core, we had a 1609 on the 14 inch and a 1645 on the 16 inch. Not a big difference, but in multi-core, we have a pretty big difference here. So on the 14 inch, 11701 versus 14692. And you can see the MP ratio is 7.27 versus 8.93. And that is just the difference between the multi-core and single core scores. And then the final test is going to be a video export test with Final Cut Pro. All right, so we're gonna take this 25 gigabyte clip from my SSD and put it into the timeline for both of the Final Cut Pro projects. And we're gonna put some effects on it and then export it and see which one can export it quicker. We just finished exporting and we finished up on the 16 inch first, of course, at nine minutes and eight seconds. And then on the 14 inch model, we exported in nine minutes and 40 seconds. So really not a massive difference when it comes to H.264 4K video video exporting, which is what most people are going to be doing on these machines anyways. I think really the only time you're going to see the 16 inch really thrive is for like maybe something a lot more intensive, like an 8K, you know, video or maybe a ProRes RAW video or something like that. So now what are my final thoughts on the M2 Pro MacBook Pro? And I would have to say that I'm kind of surprised that the real world performance was not as significant as the benchmarks made it seem. What I mean by that is that the performance overall in the 14 inch and the 16 inch are very, very similar. You're not really going to see a big difference on the M2 Pro chip here between the two sizes. I think the only time you're gonna see a big difference is if you're doing exhaustive tasks like you know hour long feature film video editing where you're gonna be having those fans going for a long time. In that case, the 16 inch is going to be better because we do have better you know thermals, better heat management with the bigger cooling system. And of course we do have more real estate here as well on the trackpad and around the trackpad. And of course we do have the bigger display. So if you like that bigger display, obviously go with the 16 inch. If you like the smaller form factor, the more compact, lighter MacBook, the 14 inch is going to be the way to go. The 14 inch is honestly my personal favorite. I still think it's the best in terms of just portability. It's not super big and it's also pretty lightweight. It's good when you have it in a backpack and things like that. The 16 inch is just kind of too big for my taste, but it is perfect if you are somebody who does a lot of very intensive tasks, very exhaustive tasks. Even though the 14 inch is going to be right behind it, I think the 16 inch is more so for people who just want that bigger display and more real estate. Now, if you have an M1 or M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I would say that you probably should not upgrade to the M2 Pro MacBook Pro. Now the M2 Max, maybe we'll talk about that in a later video, but I think that this is mainly going to be an upgrade for those that are still on Intel MacBooks or just those that are looking for their first MacBook Pro purchase. But stay tuned for more coverage on the M2 Pro and the M2 Max MacBook Pros. I will be doing a lot more coverage and a lot more testing on these devices. And I will give you guys more of a review after a few days, a few weeks, and even a few months after using these devices to see if my opinion has changed because I'm sure it will. This is just my overall 
first impressions video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more MacBook and Mac Mini coverage coming very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.